Encouraging news from health officials this morning. The Omicron variant may not be as severe as originally thought. However, officials say this is early data and much more needs to be done. We can't really make any you know, cause in terms of severity just based on whether it's more transmissible and has immune escape. Um, because you could have a very transmissible um, variant that you know, could cause mild disease. And officials are also encouraging Americans to get their boosters if they're eligible. Discuss more on the national politics scene as the former state Senate president, Mike Herodopoulos. Mike, good morning. Hope you had a good weekend. We did, Ryan. Good morning to you as well. So let's talk about the variant. It's obviously sent markets down, maybe not as bad as originally thought. That is certainly good news, though we really don't know for sure. What's your read on this and how it affects politics? Well, I think the good news for all of us is that the variant is not as severe as they originally thought, which, of course, dramatically impacted the markets right after Thanksgiving. We've seen the markets stabilize since then. It looks like this might be like some of the other variants, not as bad as the Delta, but some variants. And it, the good news is that these different companies now have a protocol in place so that as a new variant comes out, they can quickly adjust the vaccine accordingly. These are good news for all of us. And, of course, the great news in Florida is that we have the lowest number of COVID cases since May of 2020, which should only help build further the Florida economy. Yeah, Mike, but I look at some of these recovery stocks like cruise lines, airlines and stuff. They're not really bouncing back with this better Omicron news. And I think part of that is inflation. A lot of some on Wall Street say, look, that's a bigger concern right now than this variant is. And then you mix crime in there also. Oh, these are tough times. I mean, you, you go down the laundry list. It's one of the reasons why Joe Biden's numbers continue to be right around 40 percent approval ratings, because when you look at the ultimate hidden tax, that is inflation. When we see a, a, an increase of inflation of around 6 percent, that means you have 6 percent less buying power. And that dramatically impacts the middle class and lower middle class most adversely because you're also mixing it, as you said perfectly, gas prices going up so much. And so these are going to be tough times for a lot of people over the Christmas season because when you add all these things up, it makes the extra dollars you expected to spend more difficult. So issues are industries like the cruise industry, Little and Disney and others. They know they're not going to have as many visitors because people are paying for other things that they weren't paying higher prices for before on. Now they can't go on vacation or do the extra things they'd like to do. Yeah, it takes a hit on discretionary income for sure. Let's talk about Senate Republican numbers. Uh, key states, you're talking about Nevada, Arizona and Georgia. Where, where, Georgia, where are those numbers? Well, as we saw speaking after the Virginia and New Jersey races, the Republican numbers are spiking up. Again, it's a direct contrast to, of course, President Biden and Vice President Harris. Every time their numbers go down, Republican numbers go up. We all know the Senate is tied right now. And in the three important states the Republicans are looking at, Arizona, Nevada, and Georgia, all, all those states, the polling numbers continue to rise for those Senate candidates trying to defeat the incumbent. So it looks very good right now for Republicans in the Senate. Senate. And most people already expect that the House will dramatically fall to the Republicans as well. And so in less than a year, we might see Joe Biden kind of out on his own, not having the House and Senate to support him as he does at this point. Let's finish with this. Talk about some really interesting governor races we're watching, including Georgia. You've got uh, Democrat Stacey Abrams right back again against a Republican candidate that has had different backing from the president. Uh, this is kind of taking a wild turn in Georgia. Oh, this is the one when, in Georgia. This is supposed to be a Republican state. We all know what happened, of course, last January, where the Democrats took both Senate seats and dramatically changed the, the course of politics with the Biden election before it. And so in Georgia, where you have currently Governor Kemp, who was originally supported by Donald Trump in the primary, which got him over the hump, and he won the primary almost four years ago. Now, four years later, because Kemp is seen as kind of a moderate figure and was not as vigilant as the president, the former president, had hoped. You see that now that the former United States senator, who actually lost back in January, is going to get into the race against Kemp as a Republican. So you have a very divisive Republican primary. This is never a good thing, as we've talked about already here in Florida, where the Democrats are going to do the same thing. So politics is getting crazy. The concern that a lot of Republicans has, we get so divisive, think we have such a good chance to win in the November that we might get the wrong candidate in the primary while political times and I think they're going to continue throughout the year. Yeah, still some hard feelings in Georgia over what happened over the last 18 months for sure. Mike, got to leave it there. We'll talk to you at 8 o'clock hour about state issues, including sports betting, the wild turn that took. We'll see you at 8 o'clock. Thanks. Thanks, Ryan. See you soon. All right, 740 this morning. We now know, by the way, who's going to be coming.